And today we will learn how three events, the Compromise of 1850, the Fugitive Slave Act, and the Dred Scott decision led the Southern states to secede from the Union, thus prompting the American Civil War. Hi, this is Mr. Wesley. Welcome back to the Homeschool History Show. This week, we'll learn about how three events led to the Southern states seceding from the Union. Three major events led to the Southern states of the Union seceding, not succeeding, seceding. That means to leave. They want to take off, do their own thing, not be a part of America anymore. First of these events was the Compromise of 1850. So you may remember the Missouri Compromise of 1820. They kind of patched things together for a little bit, but the patch is starting to wear off. Time for another compromise. What happened by 1850? Well, the United States had expanded all the way westward by this point, and it was time to make California a state. The Compromise of 1850 added California as a free state to the Union, meaning no slaves in California. The new territories of New Mexico and Utah were made states, and it was left up to them to decide whether they wanted to be a slave or free state. The new territory from the Mexican-American War was also free to choose which one they wanted to be, but slavery was kept in the capital city of Washington, D.C. However, the slave trade was abolished. What that means is the buying and selling, importing of new slaves ended, but the slaves that were already here were allowed to be kept as slaves. It seems like people can't really make a clear decision here. They know that slavery is wrong, but they're kind of, eh, just kind of looking the other way. If you get that feeling, it's because you're right. It's exactly what's going on in 1850. The second major event of 1850 that led to the Southern states seceding and the eventual American Civil War was the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. So, slave is somebody who's owned and doesn't get paid for their work. A fugitive is somebody who runs away from the law. So if you rob a bank and try to hide, you're a fugitive and you should probably be caught. But if you're a slave who's just trying to be free, this law also made you a fugitive just for wanting to be free. And it required that slaves be sent back to their owners, even if they escaped. <laughs> Fugitive Slave Act of 18... <laughs> it's okay. The Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 required that any runaway slave be returned to their previous owner or master, even if they made it to a free state. Now, it's important to keep in mind, a lot of people in the North and the free states did not support slavery and they really didn't like the idea that if they did not turn in a slave, they would be a criminal too. That made something that previously was kind of the South's business, their business. Also, if you've heard of the Underground Railroad, which was the system of freeing slaves, now you know why it ended in Canada. Had to go all the way up there for them to be actually safe because if they're caught in a free state, Fugitive Slave Act demanded they be returned. People were not very happy about that up North. This was passed on September 18th, 1850. Abolitionists are people who fought to end slavery. Abolitionism is the ism of hating and wanting to destroy slavery. And Northern abolitionists being forced to return slaves, big reason for the start of the war. Finally, and certainly not least of all, was the Dred Scott decision. So Dred Scott was a person who was born a slave and the decision is a Supreme Court decision. So if you may recall, there are three branches of government, the executive, legislative, and judicial. The judicial branch culminates in the Supreme Court. Their job is to interpret the law, to look at it and say, this is what the law means, this is what it doesn't mean. Scott argued that he was legally free because he and his family lived in a free territory. Judge Taney, however, the chief justice of the Supreme Court, decided seven to two, that means seven people decided Taney was right, and two decided Mr. Scott was right, so the seven won, unfortunately, and held that one, free blacks were still not citizens, and two, the ban on the Louisiana Territory slavery was unconstitutional, so that ban could not be enforced, and three, neither Congress nor territorial governments could ban slavery. So in other words, Dred Scott was told, sorry, you're neither a citizen, nor are you free. You're still a slave. This was the last straw. This really set off the abolitionists, and it is widely regarded today 
to be the, if not the, one of the worst decisions in the history of the Supreme Court. The Northern reaction to the Dred Scott decision accelerated the rise of the new Republican Party from Ripon, Wisconsin, and their soon to be famous, extremely famous presidential candidate, Abraham Lincoln in 1860. The South reacted by seceding from the Union and prompting the Civil War. A case that many thought would settle the issue of slavery actually only made it more volatile, means more violent, more confused, and more likely to erupt. And that's exactly what it did. The secession of the states after the Compromise of 1850, the Fugitive Slave Act, and the Dred Scott decision. They are a dreadful moment in history, not a happy moment in history, but definitely a great one because they are so important. So until next time, I'm history.